Marcus Aurelius was the emperor of Rome during the 2nd century AD, the last in a line of five emperors known to have ruled Rome with authority, humanity, and competence. During his tenure, the Roman Empire suffered from a severe pandemic in the form of Antonine Plague that broke out in 165 and devastated the population of the Roman Empire, causing the deaths of 5 million people. In the face of disaster, instead of worrying and panicking or fleeing away like the other wealthy officials, Aurelius advocated a calm rationalism and kept Rome together. He passed legislation subsidizing the cost of funerals to keep bodies from piling up in the streets. When the army was short on recruits, he conscripted gladiators. When the army could not pay the cost of new soldiers needed to replace the dead, he sold off his imperial possessions to finance the effort. Instead of worrying, he was able to see a problem, solve it, then see another problem and solve that one too without giving way to panic. During his rule, Aurelius found the time to construct a series of autobiographical writings now known as the Meditations. These Meditations are regarded as some of the greatest works of philosophy, which is why in this video we'll be using some of his wisdom as motivation to help keep you from worrying and stressing too much about the ongoing pandemic, as well as all the other things that we tend to worry about in our everyday modern lives. Number 1. Everything is just history repeating. Marcus Aurelius says, No matter what happens, keep this in mind. It's the same old thing from one end of the world to the other. It fills the history books, ancient and modern, and the cities and the houses too. Nothing new at all. Currently, most of us are rightfully worried about the uncertainties surrounding coronavirus as we're in the midst of a worldwide pandemic, with cities and even countries shutting down. Some of us are in areas that have already been affected by coronavirus. Others are bracing for what may come and all of us are watching the headlines and wondering, what's going to happen next? We don't know how exactly we'll be impacted or how bad things might get, and that makes it all too easy to catastrophize and spiral out into overwhelming worry and panic. In his meditations, Marcus Aurelius tells us that life is simply history repeating itself. If you're worried about losing your job, losing your money and your partner leaving you, millions of others have gone through this in the past and are going through the things you're worried about right now as you're watching this video. This means that we experience the same pattern of life over and over again, just with different formats and with different characters. He tells us whatever's happening today has already happened before. If the world is facing a crisis today, the world has also faced similar crises like that in the past, such as the Black Death, SARS, Spanish Flu, Ebola, and indeed the Antonine Plague. But according to Aurelius, it's just life manifesting the same patterns. History has taught us that this pattern of life never changes as long as we live. Everything is momentary, and nothing is truly novel. So why do we worry so much when it's just life repeating itself again and again? Worry is what happens when your mind dwells on negative thoughts, uncertain outcomes, or things that could just go wrong. When we think about an uncertain or unpleasant situation, such as being unable to pay the rent or doing badly on an exam, our brains become stimulated. When we worry, it calms our brains down and is also likely to cause us to problem solve or take action. In a way, worrying is a way for your brain to handle problems in order to keep you safe. Hence worries, doubts and anxieties are a normal part of life, and while it's natural to worry about an unpaid bill, an upcoming job interview or a first date, normal worrying becomes excessive when it's persistent and uncontrollable. We constantly worry every day about these what-ifs and worst-case scenarios. We don't let these anxious thoughts get out of our head and let negative thinking and always expecting the worst to take a heavy toll on our emotional and physical health. We need to understand that whatever it is that we're worrying about, in reality it's happened before. What seems to be uncomfortable and scary now will soon be old and familiar tomorrow. So instead of worrying too much, Try to keep your calm, because we humans are adaptable creatures and we have a unique capacity to change along the ever-changing pattern of life. Number 2. Ignore the noise Marcus Aurelius once said, It never ceases to amaze me. We all love ourselves more than other people, but care more about their opinion than our own. 
We live in a very noisy world, and our thoughts are constantly being influenced by the wide variety of noise coming from other people in the form of their judgments and opinions, who make their decisions based on fear and greed. At times, their noise has a huge influence in triggering our fears and making us anxious about ourselves and about the problems we might face in future. In return, we end up paying way too much attention to these people and spend a lot of our time and efforts worrying about what they think about us. Let's look at this example. Take worry over losing your job. Often, because of the world we live in, you'll be more worried about what other people like your friends and family might think of you, rather than concentrating on the ways you could improve your circumstances. This is because of our innate desire to be liked by everyone, so we constantly seek for their approval without realizing how much this people-pleasing attitude sabotages our self-confidence and contributes to our worries. The more we desire the approval of others, the more we become a slave to others. The ancient Stoics were way ahead of time when it came to not being influenced by other people's opinions. They pointed out that we do not control the opinions of others, and that things we do not control are irregular, and the more we keep valuing things that are outside of our control, the less control we'll have. The truth is, no matter how hard we try, we can never please 100% of others. No matter how hard we try, there are always going to be people who will resent you, be jealous of you, judge you, hate you, reject you, and so on. We worry too much about these people and worry about nasty things they'll say to us if we do something that's against their choice. There are many possible reasons why they say what they say and why they think what they think. It could be ignorance, frustration, jealousy, but they might be telling us about something we truly lack. If that's the case, fix it, but being upset by the rest is just a waste of energy. Worrying about what they say or think about you is as foolish as getting upset about the weather. Their voice needs to be ignored. With the ongoing outbreak of the virus, we may want to ignore the noise created by the media because those media companies are primarily focused on profit and so routinely over-sensationalize certain topics by focusing on the ones that will trigger our fear and cause us to worry because concern means clicks, and clicks mean money. So even more than ever, it's important to stay up to date with the latest news from trusted sources regarding the virus. But if we constantly watch news or read information on the internet, we'll start to believe that there's nothing else going on in the world apart from this pandemic, and that simply isn't true. So it's better to spend our time on something that we can influence, like doing something better. For example, calling up a long-lost friend and reconnecting, or really putting serious time and energy into the hobbies and skills you want to perfect. Number 3. Practice Mindfulness In the words of Marcus Aurelius, Remind yourself that it is not the future or what has passed that afflicts you, but always the present. Stoic mindfulness is really about seeing what's up to you in any given situation, focusing on doing that well and on doing the act with kindness towards others. Instead of fearing about the worst possible outcome of the future, mindfulness means concentrating on your present and making the most of it. So if you're worried about your partner leaving you, being mindful about it will make you aware of the problems you're facing with your partner so that you can work towards solving them and hopefully avoid the worst outcome. While worrying leads you to fear and panic, with mindfulness you're more likely to get into the zone or flow so that you can complete your work more efficiently, and as you have a greater sense of well-being, you'll also be less stressed. Mindfulness might even make you appreciate your partner that much more and the relationship that you both share. You can start being mindful just by being conscious about your eating habits, by going for a walk, by avoiding multitasking at your work, or by meditating. Start with about 5-10 to 10 minutes a day and work your way up to about 20 minutes or longer. The idea is to give your mind a rest from the constant sensory stimulation of all your activities and just allow it to settle down naturally. Particularly now, in 2020, our situation is one of extreme uncertainty. We don't know what will happen, how long it will last or even what things will be like when it's over. One thing we do know, however, is that worrying about it won't change the outcome, and right now much of the personal time that used to be part of our daily routines – commutes, time alone at home, going to the store – just isn't available. This means it's extra important to practice mindfulness to recharge. You can decide to set time aside each day to practice mindful activities. 
in the morning before everyone's awake can be a great time to really ground yourself. Morning mindfulness can help set the tone for the day. Do some deep breathing, meditate, exercise, whatever mindfulness activity works for you. You can even practice mindfulness as a family. Designating time to practice mindful activities as a family will help everyone feel less anxious. It could be a daily family yoga session, or a quiet walk in the woods as a group, or asking everyone to mention one good thing they heard or saw that day over dinner. Practicing mindfulness helps bring us back to the present and keeps us grounded. Number four, serve yourself. As Marcus Aurelius succinctly wrote, life is short, that's all there is to say. Get what you can from the present, thoughtfully, justly. We humans live in what researchers call a delayed return environment. Most of the choices you make today will not benefit you immediately. If you do a good job at work today, you'll get a paycheck in a few weeks. If you save money now, you'll have enough for retirement later. Many aspects of modern society are designed to delay rewards until some point in the future. While other animals are worried about immediate problems like avoiding predators or seeking shelter from a storm, humans also worry about potential problems ahead. Unfortunately, living in a delayed return environment often leads to chronic stress and anxiety for humans because the newest part of our brain and the part most commonly associated with higher reasoning, the neocortex, has barely evolved since our Paleolithic ancestors around 200,000 years ago, unlike our societal evolution, which is only accelerating. Hence, the mismatch between our old brain and our new environment has a significant impact on the amount of worry, stress, and anxiety we experience today. Since we can't travel back and change the timeline of our civilization, our best option is to shift our worries from long-term problems to daily routines that will help solve those problems. For example, instead of worrying about living longer, focus on taking a walk each day. Instead of worrying about losing enough weight for the wedding, focus on cooking a healthy dinner tonight. The key insight that makes this strategy work is making sure your daily routine both rewards you regularly and stops you from worrying about future uncertainties. In other words, this strategy is all about making the most of your today, your present. Similarly, if you're worried about the uncertainty pertaining to this ongoing pandemic, you can shift your worries by asking yourself, how can I make the most of my day today? You might realize that you want to read a book and that you never got time to read before, or you can start learning a new hobby. You can use this time to get rid of some of the harmful habits that you never could because of your work environment or life situation. If you're uncertain about your job, then you can shift your worries to learning a new skill that might serve you as an advantage in keeping your job or finding a new exciting career. Your only purpose is to make the most of your present without worrying too much about your future. Number five, serve others. Marcus Aurelius asks us, is helping others less valuable to you, not worth your effort? Stoics believe that every moment is just another opportunity to practice kindness. When plague and famine hit the empire, dead bodies started to pile up and even when all the richest people in the empire fled, Marcus Aurelius decided to stay in Rome. He stood bravely and did everything he could, summoning priests of every sect and doctors of every speciality, touring the empire in an attempt to purge it of the plague using every purifying technique known at the time. He attended funerals, gave speeches, showed up for his people, assuring them that he did not value his safety more than his responsibility. He kept himself strong for others. He was not delusional, nor gave people any false hope or misleading information. In fact, he was so deeply moved by the people's suffering that he publicly wept after overhearing someone say, Blessed are they who died in the plague. A good leader is strong, but feels deeply the pain of others. Most of us would like to think of ourselves as a kind person and would want to commit to helping society, but we end up falling short or failing to do whatever we said we would do. Between the business of our daily lives and excessive worrying of what might or might not happen in future, we forget the world around us and others in it that need our help today. We often don't show kindness because we don't have enough money to donate. However, there are always ways to be kind that don't involve money. 
You can be kind by showing respect to others, by donating your time to helping out a group of people. You can donate old things that you don't need anymore, whether it's clothes or household appliances. You can volunteer at places all over your city, most likely. The truth is that any act of kindness can help us to demonstrate that positive identity and make us feel proud of being ourselves. Once we're proud of ourselves and once we have that self-confidence, we stop worrying about the unknown. With this video, we've also been given the opportunity to help people who are suffering because of this ongoing pandemic. We've partnered with the Ion Welfare Society. Ion Welfare Society is a non-governmental organization which is working relentlessly during the pandemic to provide relief to the poor and needy in various parts of India. They're doing this by distributing groceries, masks and sanitizers to the families of migrant laborers, domestic helpers, drivers and many other daily workers who are left with no money and no means to earn their daily bread or buy sanitizing products or masks to protect themselves from the virus, all because of the lockdown. This organization is also utilizing funds to support the government, administration and hospitals by providing PPE kits, infrared thermometers and sanitizers for all doctors and nurses. So if you'd like to contribute, please click on the link in the description. We at Philosophies for Life and the Ion Welfare Society are incredibly grateful for however much you wish to donate, because we know it's going to be used to buy the groceries and hygiene-related supplies to help those people who are in need and suffering right now. Thanks for any support you can offer. If you enjoyed this video, please do make sure to check out our full Stoicism playlist and for more videos like this to help you find success and happiness using ancient philosophical wisdom, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching.